So you have a trip planned for New York City and you gotta see a Broadway show. But how are you gonna get tickets without spending $200 a pop? And where can you find the most affordable tickets? Don't worry, I work on Broadway and I've seen almost 200 individual Broadway shows. I got you covered. Hey friends, if you're new here, my name is Katherine Quinn. I talk about Broadway, lifestyle, and financial freedom. I also work on Broadway and I wanna bring more people to Broadway. Helping you find reasonably priced tickets seems like a good place to start. So the first thing that we need to understand is the ticketing landscape. What categories of tickets are there? And the basic categories of tickets, which are regular tickets, premium tickets, rush, lottery, and standing room. Ticket prices fluctuate based on demand. So whether you're seeing a weekday or a weekday matinee versus a Friday night performance is going to alter how expensive that seat is. Those in the marketing world will be familiar with dynamic pricing. Broadway uses it too. Planning ahead is crucial, so I want to help you prepare for your Broadway shows to the best of your ability. Tip number one, should you buy tickets in advance or wait until you can buy them in person? The answer to this question is, it depends. If you were trying to get tickets to a show that is regularly selling out, so we're talking about the Hamiltons, the Lion Kings of the world, you're gonna wanna buy that ticket in advance. How do you even know if a show is selling out? Well, there's two ways that you can check capacity. One way is you can look on the ticketing platform on that show's website. The official ticketing provider for Hamilton is Broadway Direct. I picked November 29th sort of arbitrarily as the day that I'm going to see Hamilton. Those tickets are priced anywhere from $110 to $289.50 and that's before fees. So let's look at mid price is $203. So I'm gonna select one of these tickets, select buy one ticket for 203. We're now gonna get into the world of fees. The online fee is $14.50. Okay, okay, so here's what I appreciate. It did actually factor in the fee. Not all platforms are the same. There's different ticketing providers for different houses on Broadway, annoyingly, but for Broadway Direct, the 203.50 actually includes the $14.50 fee. So it's actually a $189 ticket. Now here's the thing. If you go to the box office in New York City, if you go to the Richard Rogers on I think 45th, you can save that $14.50, which if you're a family of four, that ends up saving you, what, 60 bucks? Which isn't like an insignificant amount of money, especially when you're already spending $200 on every single ticket. For a show that is regularly selling out, especially if you're coming during peak season, and especially if you're like a family of four, if it's not just you and a partner who are trying to get tickets, or you and a friend, or even you traveling solo, like could you get a single seat to Hamilton like week of? Definitely. But if you're wanting your kids to see the show for the first time, or you know, have that magical Broadway experience, make sure the four of you are sitting together in prime seats, you're gonna wanna buy those tickets in advance and you're gonna have to deal with those fees. Now, I'm gonna look at a date that's closer to where I am right now. It's practically sold out and that's for a Tuesday. Now, there are seats. If it's just you, you can get a seat. If it's you and a partner, you can probably get a seat. If it's a family of four, I don't know. The other thing that you can do is the Broadway grosses, like the capacity for every single Broadway house is published online for free for all humans every single week. It comes out Tuesday or Wednesday. The one that I like to view, the one that I find cleanest is the Broadway world. So if you just Google Broadway world, Broadway grosses. So the most recent week that I am looking at, Hamilton was at 100% capacity. Lion King was at 93. There was a show that closed, it was over capacity. It was even a Blazada's last week in Town. it was over capacity. And Juliet, 97%, that's one that you might wanna get tickets for in advance. Back to the Future is selling very well right now. I don't know how long it'll be able to sustain it just because that theater is massive. Moulin Rouge, 97%. Any of the shows that I did not just mention, of the shows that have currently opened on Broadway, you're safe to buy in person, unless you're looking at a holiday week. But seasonally, you're gonna be okay with Book of Mormon, Aladdin, MJ, Here Lies Love, Six, Shucked, Wicked, Harry Potter, Kimberly Akimbo, Sweeney Todd, The Cottage, Chicago, Shark Has Broken, Some Like It Hot, Beautiful Noise. You're gonna be fine with all of those because all those capacities are anywhere between 60 and 90%. So there's 10% of the seats minimum remaining for any of those shows. So you could wait until the week of. Now, the reason that I like waiting until the week of is I like to save the money on those fees. I can't stand spending an extra $20 on just like online ticketing fees. It's infuriating to me. If you're wanting to hedge your bets and save some money, buying tickets at the box office is actually one of my favorite ways to buy tickets for Broadway shows. And we will talk a little bit more about why and how I think that some of the discount sites aren't actually saving you money in a little bit. Tip number 
two, we're gonna talk about the TKTS booth and TDF. If you've ever been to Times Square and you see those bright red steps in Times Square, those steps are on top of the TKTS booth. TKTS is a project of the Theater Development Fund, the TDF. Day of, you can buy discounted tickets to same day Broadway shows. Both online and in person, there will be a board that will tell you what percentage off the tickets that they are offering and kind of give you a price range. Now, while you can see what shows are available at TKTS online, you cannot purchase TKTS tickets online. You have to purchase them in person, either at the Times Square location or the Lincoln Center location. Now, I haven't bought tickets from TKTS in a while, I will be completely honest with you. Judging by crowds, I would hedge my bets and go to Lincoln Center first. So while it's not like in the theater district, it's only at like what, 65th? I think it's in the David Rubenstein atrium, which is also a lovely place to like hang out and get work done. Bonus pro tip. I would try to deal with those crowds. I'm very grateful for TKTS. I have seen many a Broadway show as a result of TKTS. It's not like maybe my number one right now, but I highly recommend it, especially if you're not a member of TDF. The Theater Development Fund is the organization partnered with the Broadway League that offers TKTS. TDF offers a membership. Now the membership is available to industry professionals, art students, arts teachers. I have been a TDF member for I think about 10 years and it has paid for itself so many times over. A, a TDF membership is only $42 as of the time that I'm filming this video and every single ticket is like $62 or less for Broadway, off-Broadway concerts, ballet, you name it, arts events all across the city. It's incredible. I love TDF. I feel like it's one of the industry better kept secrets that like anybody who works in theater could get a TDF membership. I hesitate to share it because I have so loved getting my tickets that way and I'm like they can't I don't want to create more scarcity but also I want to create accessibility and that's what we're doing here. So if you do work in the arts and you're not a TDF member it pays for itself very very quickly like if you're going to see like three or four Broadway shows during your trip it's going to pay for itself. Highly recommend. Now here's what I will say. The tickets can be in the mezzanine. They're usually not partial view. That rarely happens for me and if they are it'll indicate on the site if they are obstructed but they are. I love TDF tickets like highly recommend. <laughs> Tip number three, let's talk about Rush Lottery and Standing Room Only. SRO or Standing Room Only is when a show is completely sold out, there are actually little numbers on the back row of the orchestra, sometimes also on the back row of the mezzanine. I have done that before, I did not like it. <sighs> 2009 West Side Story revival. 2012, I don't know, sometime around bad. Yeah, I did not like that experience. You can stand at the back of the house, you have a little number, there sometimes ushers will be a little funky about where your purse is, where your bags are, if you can set anything down. I did Book of Mormon standing room like a decade ago and the person sitting in front of me said, would you stop laughing so much? And I was like, but I was laughing on them and they didn't like that, which, you know, fair enough. It is very cheap. It happens very infrequently nowadays, but just so I'm covering my bases, that is standing room. Back in the day, it was like 25 bucks for standing room. Now I think it's probably like 40 or 50. Rush and lottery. now. There is a comprehensive list on Playbill.com, we'll throw up a link. If you Google Playbill Standing Room Rush Policies, that link will come up and it will tell you the policies of every single show. Broadway audiences are not back with the same numbers that they were pre-pandemic. We're still rebuilding our way back. So the odds of you getting a seat via Rush and Lottery are pretty high. Now, I am not a lottery winner, pretty much ever. I don't win the lottery. It is like, it's just not my lot in life. I was meant to hustle. I don't know. I don't I never win. I never. That's not my journey. Digital Rush is a thing. We're going to talk about Today Ticks in a little bit. Today Ticks and Digital Rush are a good combo. So there's Rush in person, which just means that at 10 a.m. when the box office opens or on Sundays it's like noon, please look up the individual hours for whatever theater you're trying to see a show at. You will show up at or before that time and the first lucky 30 people, 40 people, whatever they have allocated for rush seats. We'll get those seats. I am also a giant fan. I've seen a bazillion shows via in-person rush. Some shows are student rush, but mostly it's just a general rush. So literally any human can do it. If you're like, how early should I show up? There's two things you can do. The first thing you can do is there are Broadway diehards. Those Broadway diehards, they post on the Broadway World message boards. So you can search Broadway World message board, Hamilton, rush time. Where's the other place? The other place is the box office. Go to the box office on the first day of your trip and say, hey, what time do people generally start lining up for rush? One time I got in a rush line at 4 a.m. and no one else showed up until 8. I was really broke. Got the tickets. They, they'll have a tentative idea. Someone in the box office will know. Save, spare yourself 
and uh, yeah. <laughs> This is tip number four. We're going to talk all about today ticks. I have some mixed feelings about today ticks. Today ticks doesn't always save you money. For those of you who don't know, today ticks is an app that you can use on your phone where you can buy discounted Broadway tickets. Now, here's the thing. The fees are astronomical. So by the time that you have purchased this discounted ticket and paid the extra $20, it's not actually cheaper than if you had just gone to the box office and picked out whatever seat you wanted. Okay, so we're looking at Shucked. They're saying they're having a back to school sale during the month of September, Wednesday, September 27th, 7.30 p.m. Okay, they're factoring their fees in. They did not used to do that, so that's smart. $62, including a $13 fee, and they now have an approximate view. Okay, so this has gotten better. You used to only be able to look at a view from your seats from literally viewfrommyseat.com, which I still recommend as a resource, and it is more accurate than this. And you don't get to select, so am I gonna get to select my seat? No, it's just like rear mezzanine, and it could be like the last row of the rear mezzanine, who knows? So then let's go to the Shucked box office through Broadway Direct, which is the official ticketing provider of Shucked. It's gonna be $59 for the ticket and $10.75 in fees, so $69.75 total. Okay, so today ticks, if you're doing the back to school sale, will save you seven dollars now let's look if it's not the back to school sale so i'm now picking like october for the same seat now rear mezzanine is 72 dollars whereas okay so once i'm in october and i'm not doing today ticks special for september it is cheaper to buy the same ticket even online including fees from the box office of shucked through Broadway Direct than it is for Today Ticks, which is theoretically a discounted ticket. Shucked is not selling out. It's selling well. It's like 80 something capacity, yay. But I'm still paying $11 in fees online. I could save that $11 if I went to the box office in person and just pay $59. So just to lay it out, for the same seat, it, at the box office, that ticket is $59. Through Broadway Direct, Shucked's official ticketing provider, it's $69.75. With Today Ticks, it is $72. Today Tix is valuable with its rush and sometimes like those, it'll have random deals like the September tickets and you can save seven bucks. <music> Tip number five, for Lincoln Center and Roundabout, they have their own internal programs. So for Lincoln Center, they have Link Ticks. For Roundabout, they have Hip Ticks. Link Ticks is anyone 21 to 35. Hip Ticks is anyone 18 to 40. For Hip Ticks, you get $30 tickets to any roundabout show. Link Ticks is $32 tickets. So those are some sweet deals if you happen to be a younger person trying to see one of roundabout shows or Lincoln Center shows. And anyone can sign up. That is one that you need to plan in advance. If you're trying to see a big splashy Lincoln Center show, you gotta do that early. Roundabout, you can sometimes have more luck getting a Hip Ticks ticket later. <music> My sixth and final big tip is dynamic pricing for seasonal and off-peak times. So I mentioned this earlier, but weekday matinees can be cheaper. You'll get a sense when you look at the calendar, but if you can plan the harder to get tickets on easier to get nights, you will save money. Does that make sense? So see Hamilton on a Tuesday, see Hamilton on a Wednesday, save Friday night to see Shucked, Some Like It Hot, those are your weekend shows. It's gonna save you some money because the range really varies in terms of ticket prices. So the last stats that the Broadway League published in terms of like how much Broadway tickets are for the 2018 to 2019 season, the average ticket was $145. Now I guarantee you it is higher now. So I'm gonna say 170 is the average Broadway ticket price. I see so many Broadway shows. I try to see every single show that's on Broadway if I can, and I also try to never spend any more than $70 on a ticket. It is totally, totally doable. Have I spent $140 on tickets? Absolutely, for Sweeney Todd, for Parade, for Merrily We Roll Along. Those were over $100 for me. I'd say my average is probably 70, which is less than half the current average, so. I consider that a win. Going to see a Broadway show is magical. Going to see it for cheap is even better. 
Is there a service that you use that I have missed? Do you have any specific questions about ticketing for Broadway? Or do you have a hot tip for how to get cheap Broadway tickets? I hope you found this video helpful. I hope that you get to see the best of Broadway without breaking your budget. And thank you so much for sticking around. If you enjoyed this content, I also post on Instagram and TikTok at it's Catherine Quinn. And I have new content here every single week. If you're not just a Broadway fan, but a Broadway hopeful, I have a whole video on how to get a job on Broadway that I will link right up here. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.